Many of us understand there can be a significant disparity between model forecasts when moving out further in time. However, while we also expect the accuracy of the same models to improve as an event approaches, there are situations where they can still fail to capture small-scale features crucial to our decision-making. For instance, even the highest resolution models can struggle with the predictability of an observed shallow Arctic air mass. They might capture the intensity of the air mass but miss the details, such as the timing of the arrival of the Arctic air mass at various locations. Because of this, the probabilistic output could be incorrect with the timing of probability of 32 degrees or lower or the resulting onset of wintry precipitation. This is where your expertise shines. Your ability to identify situations where ensemble modeling systems struggle to resolve features or show predictability can help add value to our decision support. Because predictability often changes as a potential event approaches, we need to look at how to best analyze predictability and how it changes with time. We won't be focusing on the tools themselves in this lesson. That will follow in the next section of Ensemble Fluency. Instead, we're going to explore what tools can be used at what point in the forecast process to evaluate changes in predictability. Starting in the extended range, which we will define as anything beyond day five, you will have ensembles to look at along with a few deterministic models. Often, the best approach is to use DESI to look at the grand ensemble and the NBM WSUP viewer to see how the blend is calibrated for different fields. You can begin to quantify potential scenarios using cluster analysis in the DESI tool. Cluster analysis is an algorithm that categorizes grand ensemble members into four possible scenarios based on a selected parameter. As of mid-2024, this is done using clusters of similar 500 hectopascal height patterns, which can often be translated into timing, location, and intensity of potential high-impact weather and mesoscale events. DESI can also be used to look at each individual ensemble system mean to see if there are model-specific patterns and what the differences are between ensemble systems. One would hope that they are relatively close, but sometimes these differences are quite noticeable and have major impacts on forecast uncertainty. External to DESI is the WPC cluster page. Each can serve as a backup to the other should there be issues, but that can also provide slightly different views of potential outcomes in the ensemble and probabilistic data. For assessing hydrological impacts, the Hydrologic Ensemble Forecast Service, or HEFS, is available for you to use. HEFS can give you insight as to how weather events will impact the water side of operations in a probabilistic framework, and we will cover HEFS a bit more in the Tools and Visualizations section. The goal in using these tools for the extended part of the forecast time range is to recognize time periods where the pattern could result in significant weather and impacts to your area, and also start to develop conceptual models for what the forecast outcome could be. This will enable you to start to develop how to communicate the probability of those conceptual models occurring to partners based on the probabilistic outputs and ensemble data. As we approach approximately five days from the event, additional tools become available. The first one would be the Extreme Forecast Index and Shift of Tails, where you can quickly look at where the ECMWF is potentially forecasting extremes of several surface-based parameters and how extreme it could be. For the GEFS and CMC, you can look at the NAFE's Ensemble Situational Awareness Tables, which provide climatological context to what the current runs of the NAFE's are showing. These two tools allow you to start to view the scenarios from cluster analysis in terms of how extreme impacts could be from those scenarios. Again, your expertise in meteorology and hydrology allows you to recognize scenarios that clusters may not have picked up on or potential outliers that the extremes may not recognize, but you do. From approximately two and a half to three days prior to an event until the day of an event, you start to get the addition of deterministic models and the high-resolution ensemble forecast. The deterministic models are often higher resolution, 12 kilometers and under, which starts to provide context that the global models cannot. Deterministic models will not provide probabilistic information on their own, but are included in the NBM to increase spatial and temporal detail and contribute to the probabilistic space. More than likely, you will need to view the deterministic runs with an AWIPS, or your favorite private weather website, or maybe even your own code. 
This higher resolution information may provide additional clues as to potential outcomes in the forecast when combined with the global ensembles, or it may increase uncertainty if there is considerable spread between all the various models. With the HREF, you can get probabilistic guidance on a more narrow scope of models, all the convection allowing models, although more limited in scope, focusing on severe, winter, fire, and hydrologic fields, you can still gain an overall view of what the models contributing to the HREF are showing. The HREF is available in several places, on the SBC webpage, on a WPC webpage, and in DESI. Finally, on the day of the event or within the next 24 hours, the various models will hopefully have come to a general agreement on how the forecast event will play out and all modeling and ensemble systems have narrowed down the probabilistic space to a most likely scenario. The PDFs will hopefully have narrowed to provide a high probability outcomes and the CDFs providing accurate percentiles for values along the distribution. However, even on the day of the event, there will always be a possibility that the forecast will fall outside of the probabilistic data. You will likely have to use your expertise and experience to fill in the gaps, the details, and communicate why there could still be uncertainty in the probabilistic data when providing IDSS to our partners in public. A large part of this is also being able to provide context to the probabilities at any time range to help our partners understand why the probabilities they are given fall on or outside what the modeling systems are providing.